Do you have a passion for travel? Ever thought you'd like to become an expert travel advisor? Stay tuned for everything you need to know about coming into this interesting industry. My guest today is Lola Vasliers, owner of My Luxury Cruises Incorporated, operating cruise holiday storefront locations in Oakville and Toronto, along with a team of independent agents in Ontario, Manitoba, and Nova Scotia. Lola has been involved in the travel business since 1997, and they specialize in ocean and river cruise vacations. Hi, Lola. Welcome back to RTE Travel Talk. Hi, Ken. It's so nice to see you again. Great to have you back with us, Lola. So today, Lola, we're going to do something just a little bit different. A lot of our viewers and listeners, you know, when we talk about travel and all the great destinations and stuff, a lot of people start to think, you know, that's something that I'd like to do. And just like you, uh, that's kind of how we we came into the industry. So Mm -hmm. I just thought for the benefit of our viewers and listeners, we could spend a little time today talking about what you need to know when you enter the industry as a travel advisor. Is it really as as glamorous as it seems to the outsider? What are, you know, are the travel perks worth it? Is it a career with many responsibilities? So I was hoping you could kind of give us a brief overview of the good, the bad, and perhaps maybe even the ugly. Yeah, I'm happy to do it because like myself, there's so many of us agency owners looking for good people. Right on. So where do we start, Lola? To enter the industry, do you have to go to a specialized school, college, or beca- to become a travel advisor? No. It Now, I should preface that. Okay. Um, we specialize in cruises. Right. So when you go to a travel school, whether it's college or a private school, they do touch on cruises. Right. But the last that I've seen it, they're, they're more focused on what we call fo- full service agencies doing uh, trips to Disney, doing trips to Las Vegas, uh, Fun and Sun down in the Caribbean, that type of thing. You don't necessarily need to have a formal education. Okay. It can be taught. And um, we, through Travel Leaders, have wonderful programs. Right on. Where where someone that we take on can learn from the ground up. So basically, if you have a desire and an interest you don't necessarily need former co- formal college training. The tools and and training provided by the suppl- the travel partners and the consortia can can fill that gap. Yeah, and and even ACTA, the Association of Canadian Travel Agencies, has training. There's a lot of training out there. Right. It can go anywhere from being free to having to put an investment into the training and become a specialist right. in certain areas. So it's a wide range. So, you know, if I was thinking about getting into the business, Lola, what kind of experience do I need? Or do I need any, if I was thinking about switching careers? You don't need any real experience. Well, you should be more sales focused because it is a sales job. You are helping people plan their vacation Right. But there is a sales component to it. Well, if you're going to go into the travel industry, hopefully you will have traveled. I mean, whether you've cruised or not, as I said, we can teach you the cruise aspect. And the sooner you can get on a cruise after you start, the better. Right. But uh, definitely you, you want to have some knowledge and knowledge of geography. That really is important. It's amazing how many people go into the industry and they really don't have a good knowledge of geography. So that is crucial. So yes, if you don't know that, you're going to kind of be a, it's a much, much higher learning curve. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. And a love of, and a love of travel goes a long way, obviously. I mean, travel can be a very rewarding career. Right. You know, definitely there are perks. Definitely there is stress at times, but it can be very rewarding and you're going to have trips that are once in a lifetime. Right. So it, it's well worth looking into. Now you mentioned that it really helps to be sales oriented or have a, a kind of a sales background. I'm sure that probably is key because if you're planning a vacation for or a cruise for a couple, you know, there's a lot of back and forth between yes. between you and the client. So it helps yes. to enjoy talking to people, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You you have to enjoy working with 
people on the retail side. Yeah, for sure. And sitting down with them. And, and you know what, if you really enjoy what you're doing, your enthusiasm carries you through. So it, it you know, you, you don't sit there, you don't fake it. You really enjoy of course, planning yeah. a trip for someone. So once I join and I'm an advisor, mm -hmm. do I need certifications and where, where and how do I get them? Yeah. You need to be TICO certified if you are in Ontario. Okay. And um, TICO on their website, you can download all the material right. that you need. There is an exam. And if you are not TICO certified, you cannot be an agent in Ontario. And that's in the province of Ontario. Other places Ontario. of Canada have different regulations. And I would they do. British Columbia has something similar, right. but some provinces don't have that. Right. Uh, Quebec also has something where you have to be certified. Right. And I would expect for our viewers and listeners in the other parts of the world, it's best probably to probably check with their local state authorities for the correct certifications. Absolutely. Yeah. And in some provinces, you have to be certified to sell travel insurance. Of course. Yes. So, you know, that's another thing that... Uh, you need to look at. Talk to me about the technology. Do I have to be computer savvy? Is there any specialized software to learn as a rule? It really helps a great deal if you're computer savvy. There are agents that prefer to sort of work in the old way where you pick up the phone and you call the cruise line or the supplier and you sit and you let them do the work. But I'd say today, especially the younger generation, right. they can do it right off their phone. Right. And they do. So... <laughs> But, you know, it, it's much easier if you can work on a computer because all of the suppliers have booking engines right on their sites. Right. So you can do it without picking up the phone. And, and I personally prefer that. And it's a faster way of actually getting the work actually done rather than through phone calls. It is. Yeah. Plus you have the control. And, and this might sound a little funny, but when you're on the phone and if I was calling you and you're the, you're the supplier and you're the reservation person on the other end, you have the control of what you're looking at. I don't see the full picture unless I've got a brochure sitting in front of me. And you, you would say, okay, well, I have this cabin available. Okay, now where is that cabin situated? Is it in a good location? So I would much rather have that deck plan in front of me on the screen where I can say, I like this cabin, I'm going to click on it and hold it. It's much more efficient than sitting on the phone. Absolutely, absolutely. So it does get to be fairly complicated when you're planning a multi-destination travel or cruise. Do I need to be an organized person to work in this industry? It certainly helps. It certainly helps. But uh, yeah, it, it is really a lot more complicated than people think. It is a job. It's a profession and it's work. It definitely is. And since 9-11, or uh, sorry, since the pandemic, it's more work than it ever was because there's so many more things that you have to look at. And I mean, this all sounds daunting, but once you go through the training and you learn it, if you hook up with a good agency, that agency is going to give you the support you need. Then They're not just going to say, okay, you've done the training. Here you go. You're on your own. Go find your clients. Do it. Right. And that's critical. So, you know, for anybody looking to come into the business, that's critical. That's critical. You need to, you need to hook up with a good agency to provide you absolutely. with a, a support group of people that you can reach out to for the things you don't know. And, absolutely. You know, you're not good. You, it, you're not going to know it, everything right out of no. the gate. It's a learning curve. And that's yeah. what the people and the agents around you are for as a resource. Yeah. And, and you don't want to at the beginning sort of be, be thrown out there and be on your own because you can make some terrible mistakes, some costly mistakes. Yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. So, yeah. And the last thing anybody wants to do is to get themselves into a situation where you, where you ruin somebody's vacation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now speaking of working, is this the type of work mm -hmm. that I can actually do from home? Yes, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, a lot of professional travel professionals today are working from home and uh, definitely you can do that. Simply because you've got all the tools digitally to, mm -hmm. to, to produce the product. And, and you can even go as far as having virtual meetings with your clients on Zoom. Right. 
No, exactly. You know, so yeah, so it can be definitely done at home. You do have to be the type of person though that can work from home and that is can say, okay, this is what I'm doing. I start at nine, I quit at this time. Right. You know, so you, you, you have to be that type of a person. Yeah. Not everybody likes working from home, believe it or not. Yeah, home home life working it it, it is is a thing unto itself you have to be disciplined to you know that's it. when i'm gonna to this is when i'm going to work and this is when i'm not going to work because one right. of the one of the things it can do working from home because you're so close it can take over and you can find yourself yeah. working 24 7 and very quickly burn yourself out absolutely yeah. and the other thing with that is when you get in with a good agency if it's not just one of these hosting agencies if it's a smaller agency you have the support behind you that if you are on a trip or you are going to be away for a few days, that somebody, that your client can call somebody and get the help they need. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit for a couple of minutes because I, sure. I have a question here about what exactly is an independent contractor and stuff, but yeah. you mentioned a hosting agency and then you mentioned an agency agency. So, right. you know, explain for our viewers and listeners, you know, what exactly a ho hosting agency is and what they provide and as opposed to, for the want of a better word, a real agency. Okay. Uh, we are what is called a storefront. Okay. We do have offices. We have stores that you can walk into. Right. We are smaller, so we can provide that one-on-one -on -one right. help when you need it. A host agency is usually a large agency that has a couple hundred or more agents that are working for them. You basically, you sign up, you pay your fees. Some cases you pay monthly fees and you get the training and then you're on your own. You will find your own clients, right. do your own booking. And it's basically when you become an independent contractor, that's your own business, right? You run that business. So a host agency doesn't generally get as involved with their agents as someone like myself might. Right. Okay. So, you, so when, if we were to think about it, you, for example, Cruise Holidays of Oakville and Lawrence Park mm -hmm. are part of the Travel Leaders Network, which is a yes. host consortia. But if I understand you correctly, underneath, we'll say that's the 100,000 foot level Travel Leaders Network. But underneath Travel Leaders Network, there can be like host agencies where they could have a yes. couple of hundred agents that mm -hmm. flow through them. And then they yeah. have storefront locations like yourself which is much smaller could be you know maybe 25 agents and and a support right. group so it really makes a difference where where you come into the market at yeah and and where you feel comfortable right you know and i would encourage somebody if they are looking to get into the industry check out the options yep. don't just stop at the first one i mean do your due diligence, check it out and see which might work better for you. So once you're in the business, Lola, mm -hmm. you know, you're in, you've taken the training, you put your shingle up. How do I get clients? Where do, where do clients come from? That is the challenge right. for many of them. As an independent contractor, it is up to you to get your own client. Now, some people are very social. Right. They're involved in a lot of um, groups, some meeting type things. They may have contacts for when they were working and by the way you can do this as part-time okay so some somebody may be still working but have the time to be able to do this part-time so you look at your family your friends and the network around you and you see where you can get some business and you build it from there you build it from there and, and hopefully you get word of mouth and uh you know you book somebody and they want to take the rest of their family and they tell some other people yeah. so that's the best way of doing it however some and, and a lot of them do have means other agencies or host agencies do have means for you to market right with travel leaders we do have a fabulous fabulous lead generating program. There is a cost involved in it and you have to do some work to get it going and get it to keep it going. But we get some really good leads off of that. That would be, if I'm not mistaken, travel agent profiler. Yes. Yeah. It, you know, again, it, it, you get, you get out of it what you put into it, right. but that is, you know, 
I can I can attest to that because I've seen it work that yeah. it's a great way to start your marketing and it's not you know and if you're going to be in the business you got yeah. as you and I like to say you got to have skin in the game so you got to right. sometimes you have to spend money to make money we also have marketing pieces that go out from travel leaders on our behalf right. and it's white labeled to our agency or to the agent themselves and um they are such beautiful professional pieces there's both email and there's actual direct mail where the agent can get into get involved in this there is a fee a cost involved but i'll tell you for the small cost you cannot produce any kind of marketing like it. So it makes a it big, is just yeah. so professional. Yeah, it makes a yeah. big difference. It makes a big difference. How long do you think it takes to get a good base of clients, Lola? Just starting out and yeah. you've done everything right. How long does it normally take to build up a base of clients? Well, <clears throat> that that can be, I mean, that's kind of open-ended. Right. If you are starting out and you really don't have anything to work with to begin with, right. there are things that can be done. I mean, you take a look around and you say, okay, there's a lot of restaurants around me. Why don't I go to some of those restaurants? I'll take some marketing pieces and see if maybe they'll let me leave some pieces at the restaurant for people to reach. Or, I mean, there's a lot of different avenues that they can go down and they will learn that without belonging to groups or having some sort of network that you can pull from it's it's going to take you a while yeah it's a, it, yeah which leads me to the next question which i don't think we've really touched on is for the most part all of your remuneration as a travel advisor is commission based commission. it's based on the amount on the travel that you sell Correct. That's right. That's right. And and having said that, people need to be aware that yes, you you earn a commission on everything you sell, but generally that commission doesn't come to you until those people travel. So if you sell a trip today and they're not set to traveling for six to nine months, you don't get any money on that booking until that time. So if you are someone that relies on a paycheck every week, every two weeks, every month, whatever it is, you need that consistent paycheck. This is not the industry for you. And the really in this day and age, time. yeah, in this day and age, there really isn't any salaried travel advisor. No, because most of them, there's not as many storefront locations like us. Right. When you don't have the storefront locations if you have a storefront location you may want to take somebody on as a salaried right generally you don't and with the number of host agencies and people working from home they're definitely not going to be salary they're definitely going to be commission-based okay in terms of the commission at the end of the day who actually pays me do i get the money does the commission check come from the agency from my clients yes. or from no. it from the agency no it uh the supplier pays the agency right and the agency pays the agent okay now i know this is going to be a hard question but it's definitely on the minds of people you know mm -hmm. how much money can i make year one and if i'm good at it where you know where could i be realistically in three years okay if you're someone who gets into this industry and there are people that do this right they get into the industry thinking that they can sell trips to their friends and families and sell them at net cost right and do their own travel at net cost right if that's the way you're going into it you're not going to survive good point and 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 that's not the way you should go into this i mean this is a business this is not some place where you can go and just get free trips or cheap trips for yourself and your family it doesn't work like that i know myself and i know other consortiums and agencies that are the same before you can get benefits such as a fam trip or a seminar at sea or reduced rate for travel agents, you have to produce a certain amount of money. You have to produce sales because right. we don't want people who are just going into this saying, oh, this sounds good. I can get some real cheap trips. Right. So no. th therein lies, you know, a misconception out there, I think a little bit. Yeah. The glamour part of it is people think, oh, wow, 
I can get free trips. And there really is no such thing as a free ride, right? No, there isn't. And yeah, I, I haven't seen free cruises for a while, yeah. quite honestly. Yes, there is reduced rate for a travel agent to go. The cruise lines do have what they call seminar at sea, where it's a learning thing and you do have workshops on board. You do have time ashore, but when you're not ashore, you are doing work and you're learning marketing, sales tips, all about their product, things like that. So, I mean, there are perks, there are benefits, yeah. definitely. But the perks but, and the benefits come after you pay your dues. Yes. And put the time in. Yeah. So I mean, it's the same as the agency. When I first started, I didn't get invitations to inaugurals right. from new ships. I didn't get invitations to fam trips and a number of things. You have to work. You have to build it up, build your business, build your reputation before you start getting all those things. Right on, right on. So again, kind of circling back to, and I, I and I, yeah. And I'm trying to pin you down, trying to pin you down, but, and I know, you know, you don't want to be pinned down. <laughs> I, well, I, I can tell you yeah. from personal experience, <clears throat> excuse me, with my uh, own ICs, right. you can make over a hundred thousand dollars. Holy cow. Year. Yes, you can. You can make easily 50, 60,000. Right. And you can make over a hundred. It, it's how much time and effort you put into it yeah. to get your clients to, if you're on our profiler system, to keep your profile going, keep updating, put the work in. There are just so many little things right. that go into this, but it is possible. It is quite possible. But again, it's after you put your time in, pay your dues, take yeah. the training. And the other thing I, I would tend to think, and you can correct me if I'm mistaken, is it kind of builds on itself. If you do a really good job, professional job for one client, then by extension, they're really happy with you and they'll give you a referral to somebody else. And it, it yes. starts to grow exponentially from there. Yes. If you become and that trusted it, travel advisor. Right. And, and something that they should think about as well, if they're getting into the industry, what do you want to sell? Where do you want to go? I can tell you that for us selling, let's say a seven day celebrity cruise right. for, for a couple, for that one sale, if you were selling trips to the Dominican Republic or trips to Cuba, you probably have to sell 10 or 12 of those trips to make the commission what we make on one cruise. Wow. Wow. Oh yes. So the cruise side, yeah. the cruise side of it is, is lucrative. The cruise side of it is where you want to be. And then from that side, I mean, yes, there are some very expensive land trips, right? But it, those are usually more specialized. Right. And even in the cruise, you, you start out basically at what we call the lower end. You, you're basically going to sell Royal Caribbean, celebrity NCL, things like that. Right. Seven day Caribbean, right? You work your way up into the higher end of things. And once you get into the high end and into the luxury, that's where you're really making money. Okay. Okay. Well, that's great. So when we think about the career in general, you know, mm -hmm. what in your opinion are the perks of it? Well, obviously the travel Yes, <laughs> is the biggest, is the biggest perk. Yeah. The, the fact that you can go to parts of the world at a reduced rate that you, you can't probably do on your own. Right. That, I, I would say that is probably the biggest thing that, that would drive people. My experience when we were travel advisors was the travel obviously mm -hmm. but one of the other things that that was kind of a perk for me was living vicariously through my clients seeing them have a great yeah. time and especially yeah. especially hearing hearing from them when they came back that they had a great time yeah absolutely and even as you're planning as i said before you can't help but get excited <laughs> as you're helping them because you know you're, you're talking about places that you've been, yeah. ports you've been to and restaurants you went to and, and the great times you had there. And as you're talking to them, you find yourself getting excited because you're remembering how great it was. And, uh, you know, many times our clients say to us, well, you really get into this, don't you? And it's true because yeah. we've had the opportunity to experience river cruising and 
you know, cruising around the world and going to places like Vietnam, going to China and, you know, all these exotic places. And right. when we're yeah. helping people, we have the ability to say, yes, we've been there. We've done that. And let me tell you a little bit about this particular part of it. So that, yes, for sure, that is for sure, for sure. a lot of fun. What about, what about any downsides that people might want to consider when embarking on this? Is there anything that you'd like to point out? Yes, it's not always glamorous. It's definitely right. not always glamorous. It is a challenge at times. Things go wrong, things that you have absolutely no control over, but the client isn't going to call up the supplier. They're going to come to you. So Lola, who should, who should consider yeah, a so career as a travel advisor? Well, pretty well anybody could consider a career as a travel professional. I would just say, do your due diligence. Really right. check it out. I mean, when somebody comes to me, they're new to the industry. If it's somebody who just wants to change agencies or things like that, that's a whole different ball game. But if it's someone that's brand new and says, God, I've always loved traveling and I help my family plan their trips and I love planning our trips, that's great. Just do your research. Make sure that this really is what you want and make sure you get into the right fit with the right agency or host agency. Because when people come to me, one of the first things I want to determine is, do you rely on a steady income? I'm going to tell you straight right. up, you know, you are not going to right see on. any commission for six to nine months. Right. But other than that, why not? I mean, I was not in the travel industry before. I was in totally different industry, <laughs> but I always did love geography in school and I love travel. And I was at a position for a time in my life where I wanted to change. And I said, what do I love doing? So... Let's go for it. And here I am. Well, Lola, this is really super information for those folks who love to travel and are thinking of turning their passion into a career. Well, Lola, that's absolutely great information. If folks wanted to find out more information about becoming a travel advisor, how would they go about that and reach out to you? Well, they can go to our website, www.hookedoncruising.com, or they can uh, give me a call at... Uh, my Oakville number, 905-337-2228. And uh, I'll be very, very happy to sit and have a chat and see whether you might be, uh, whether this is uh, something you might want to do. That's excellent. That's excellent. Well, with that, I'll, I always like to ask my guests where they're off to next. Are you and George got anything planned for the next few do you months? You know what? We have nothing planned aside <laughs> from our conference this year. We really don't have anything planned so far, but uh, that can change from one day to the next day. But yes. right at this moment, aside from going to Nashville for five days in May, that's it. <laughs> well, I totally understand that too. So with that, Lola, I'm just going to wish you and George safe and happy travels. May the wind always be at your back. And I hope to see the two of you on Alito Deck real soon. Thanks, Ken. As always, I love being on your show. Take care, Lola. You too. Bye-bye. And that about wraps it up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Lola Vasliers of My Luxury Cruises Incorporated. If you'd like to reach out to Lola about becoming a expert travel advisor in this business, I'll leave her contact information in the description. If you'd like to reach us, you can simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com. Visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, a like, subscribe, and a ring of the bell is certainly appreciated and helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.